Okay guys, welcome back to Magic Cat Security Tutorials. And we're going to go over Wi-Fi today, for, uh, which is used for Wi-Fi attacks. That's W-I-F-I-T-E, Wi-Fi. And um, you'll need your antenna, like an Alpha, a TP-Link, or a Panda, uh, which is capable, has a chipset that's capable of injecting packets, not just receiving them. Have that connected, we're going to be using it. I've already opened terminal and sudo it up to root. Now I'm going to type Wi-Fi. Okay, and I'm going to choose, this is the one that has, we can see the chipset that we need. So if you have more than one Wi-Fi card, it'll ask you to choose one. So I'm going to choose that one. And we're going to let it roll. It sets it to monitor mode. It tells you to control C when ready, okay. And different things you want to look at. Uh, this is uh, the reference number. Okay, you get your ESSID here, the channel that they're on, the type of encryption you're using, the power. Uh, of course, if it's green, it's better, stronger power that you're receiving, and closer they are to you, better for the attack. <coughs> Whether they have WPS activated or not, um, or if it's locked down. Okay and whether or not they have clients online at the moment and that's the important part because we want to attack somebody that has a client online this one has two so let's go to this one right here and it's in the orange but that's okay it's not red so we're still in a good range so we hit control c uh, actually it's already gone to that so we're gonna it's already uh, stopped the, the search so we're gonna go ahead and tell which one uh nine now it's gonna start the attacks and the wonderful thing about, about this one, uh, about Wi-Fi, is it's uh, pretty much set and let it roll. Um, there's not a lot of manual interaction with it. Uh, first thing it's going to try is a pixie dust attack for the WPS. So cracking the pin. And it gives you a lot of information here. It's showing you the, uh, the BSS ID. And it shows you the ESSID, um, shows you the decibel range of the power. Uh, it's attacking WPS right now, how long it's been attacking, what it's doing at the time, how many fails it has, how many timeouts. So it gives you all the information you want, and then some. Hopefully most people nowadays don't have the WPS enabled, but you can see here it's it's very common for people to have that enabled. And the problem with that is is it's very easy to crack through a WPS pin. And once you have the pin, you have the network password. Once you have the network password, you can log into their network. Once you can log into the network, they're at your mercy. You can attack any one of the computers on the network. So when you're working on your client, people say, well, you don't use that pen testing. I've used it several times in pen testing. Uh, because a lot of businesses, they have uh, Wi-Fi enabled. And some of them, they'll even have like a guest Wi-Fi, and a, which is not password protected, and a company Wi-Fi, which is password protected. Um, but if it's not a secured network on the one that's not password protected, then you can still work your way over to the protected part of the network. Um, but either way, you would need to test their Wi-Fi also, and this is one of the ways you do it. Like, if their Wi-Fi is protected with a password, but they have WPS enabled, uh, you can still break into their Wi-Fi fairly easily. And uh, that's your whole point as a pen tester, is you want to find all their weak points and be able to show them and practice, you know, demonstrate, this is how I got in, you know, this is how easy this was. It took me, you know, like right now we're sitting at 2 minutes, 24 seconds. So you could be recording all this um, for your report for your client while it's going through the process. Now I'm probably going to cut the video here and speed it up a little bit because it'll take a couple minutes and I don't want you to get bored.
you know we just switched to a null pen attack for WPS. Yeah, yes, it does do more than one type of pen attack. Okay. Uh, you can see that the pixie dust attack failed. So now it's switch to this attack. This is what I mean about how automated this particular software application is. Um, you can pretty much set it and forget it. Once you go, <laughs> um, go get your copy, whatever, come back and you'll have your handshake or your password. Okay, so now we uh, switch to a WPS pen attack and it's got one pen already so we're going to wait this one out and see how this goes and the second attack by the way was, as you can see was using reverb for the null pen attack Okay, now it's telling us that the, the access point has actually failed because it locked. That's a, uh, a defense mechanism that's built into it after being hit so many times it'll lock it temporarily. So it's going for a, a handshake capture and it's automatically doing that so we don't have to worry about that. Hopefully we still have two clients on, on the uh, line or the handshake capture will fail. What I did is I just skipped the PMK ID and went straight to a handshake, a direct handshake capture. And it's discovering clients on the network now. And working on deauthenticating them so they can grab the handshake. Goes through and deauthenticates all of them. And there we go, we captured the handshake. Now, here's the great thing about Wi Fi. It immediately after capturing the handshake, it saves the cat file to an HS directory. Now I'm in my home directory, so it'll be a, a directory in there called HS and it'll have the handshake file. But it is also going through automatically trying to crack the handshake right now using air crack. It has a built-in word list called word list probable. And it'll go through and test that until it finds one that matches. Now you can change which word list you want it to use also. Um, but I usually leave it on the default, and if it doesn't find it on the default, then I just grab the handshake file later and I use one of my own word list with air crack until I crack it. Okay, and you can see the, the way this is working now, so I'm probably going to jump this ahead. So I'm going to jump it ahead now. Um, see it says disable monitor mode, so you're going to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it. Alright, so that's pretty much how you use Wi-Fi. Um, if you need to get to the handshake file, like I said, we go to HS. And list, and then we have different handshakes here. And we grab the one that we need, the cat file. And we would just run... Air crack ng and the name of the cat file so handshake underscore there we go and tech w and the name of the word list we'll go with user share word lists rock you text there we go and let it roll and this this will take a while, so I'm going to let you sit through this. Okay, so um, I went ahead and reran Wi-Fi again. Uh, only what I did this time is I boosted the signal on the antenna before I started, and I added the uh, I 
put a larger antenna that I have for my Alpha on there and uh, it popped right through the WPS pin. It got the WPS pin here and I've got that blurred out because uh, I don't want to share this information over the internet obviously which gave us their uh, network password and it gives you all the other information also so there we go that's uh, basically how you jump that so now I can log into their network and and have all kinds of fun and this was found with uh, pixie dust um, once I changed the antenna and boosted the the power on the antenna itself it just literally took three minutes okay all right have a great day hope you learned something thank you oh and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button I appreciate that very much take care all